Well, hello, students. Here we are, the beginning of last week, week eight. Once again, congratulations. You've made it thus far. You're doing well overall, and I appreciate you so, so very much. As we move into our final week, I want to let you know that I really appreciate the work that you did in week seven, our robust discussion about a rather absurd scenario, but not as unusual as you might have thought once we looked at the frequency with which this can occur, uh, people leaving opulent amounts of money or wealth to their pets. I'll be finishing up the grading of those and posting those grades today. On the 8th of August, you'll be able to see your grades by the end of today for that fine work. If you have not completed it, uh, be sure to go in and do so. Don't, uh, don't make me just leave you with a zero. Go in, at least do the work. Um, it's going to be capped at 70% because it missed the deadlines, but 70% um, is much better than a zero. Be sure to go in and do the work, not only for the grade sake, but also for your participation and enrichment in sharing your thoughts and completing that particular assignment. Speaking of assignments, I want to remind us again that our course ends this coming Saturday, August 13, end of the day. So any um, assignments that have been uh, outstanding from week six, week seven, and of course here in week eight need to be completed and submitted by this coming Saturday, end of the day. If you're finding that there's something of a legitimate nature that's going to cause you to miss the deadline for week eight's work, I'm not talking about week six or seven, you need to have that in. But if there's something about week eight's work that legitimately is going to cause you to be delayed, um, I want you to notify me in advance because technically I'm not permitted to accept any work past the end of the course, but life happens. And legitimately, there are some needs that people have, but I need to hear from you in advance. Don't just assume that you can post it after the end of the course without having communicated with me first. Now, do everything in your power, and most of you will be able to have everything done by the end of the course, Saturday the 13th. And in only rare, rare, rare circumstances do I extend it past that. So keep all of that in mind as we button everything up. Now, let's hop into week eight. As we wrap up, our theme this week is Sins of the Heart. We're going to be looking at probably the most neglected of the Ten Commandments, but probably the one that, if kept, would help us keep most all of the other commandments. That's the Tenth Command, and that is, you shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. So we're talking this week about what begins in the attitude, the spirit, the mind, the desires that we possess, and whether they're legitimate or not whether they're good or evil, and how they work themselves out into behaviors or actions. So we're going to look at the concept of coveting. What does it mean to covet or to be a covetous person? And coupled with that are the opposites to one another on the issue of inordinate desire. One is hate and the other is love. Much of the time, what causes us to inordinately desire that which someone else possesses or has achieved has to do with envy, jealousy, and that can deteriorate. It can morph, metastasize into uh, a spirit of, um, of hate um, or despising another person. And the contrast to that is love, being able to rejoice with those who rejoice, as the Apostle Paul taught us. So we're going to be reading one last time from Philip Ryken, his chapter 13, titled Being Content. We're going to look one more time at Thomas Aquinas, a part of his readings on what it means to be a person of love and the contrast of hate, particularly when it comes to desire and covetousness. We're going to read a piece from American author Edgar Allan Poe. You may already be familiar with this. It could well be that you read this uh, in American literature classes in high school or at some other point in life. The Cask of Amontillado is a great study in what happens when somebody takes a vengeful spirit towards someone else 
that they have been uh, hurt by. And it's going to involve these concepts of, of actions of hatred versus actions of love. And then finally, we're going to read from the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in his book, The Strength to Love, his chapter five, Loving Your Enemies. A lot of important theological and practical substance in our uh, week eight work. And that's going to lead to our final assignments. First of all, we're going to have our readings quiz over the material in week seven, as well as week eight. That's part of our final work. Don't forget that quiz. But our major assignment is going to be writing a longer final paper. By longer, I mean that the body of this paper uh, addressing three parts is going to be 900 to 1200 words in length. Our previous paper is a bit shorter, 600 to 800. This one's a bit longer. And I mentioned that it has three sections. One portion of the paper, which is to be three to 400 words, is going to provide a biblical discussion with some references to the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue, as well as perfect and imperfect duties. That's one part. Another part of the paper, 200 to 300 words, is going to make an argument to appeal to someone from a perspective that wouldn't necessarily believe or accept what Scripture says. We'll talk about that again in a moment. Uh, how you would convince a non-Christian. And then the final section, 200 to 300 words, is how this issue might be addressed if we were applying utilitarian morality or reasoning. Now remember, all three of these parts have to be in your paper. The biblical discussion, references to Decalogue, perfect imperfect duties, uh, the non-biblical discussion, working to convince someone who is not of the Christian worldview persuasion, and then third, looking at it from a utilitarian perspective. All of that in one of these topics. Don't do both, one or the other. Here's topic option one. A terminally ill patient wishes to take his own life. He's 70 years old and considers himself a financial burden on his family. He wants to explore the possibility of physician-assisted suicide. So you're going to form a, an argumentative statement, a thesis. You're going to argue that using scripture, course materials. It, the paper is going to have three parts. The biblical discussion, Decalogue, perfect, imperfect duties, the non biblical discussion, using uh, an argument from our course materials uh, that would convince a non Christian. And then, third, looking at this from a utilitarian perspective. That's option number one. Option number two a woman has learned that she is pregnant with a Down syndrome baby and is considering an abortion. She already has three small children, and she feels the strain of having a handicapped child would be more than she could bear. Once again, three parts. The biblical discussion, we're going to apply moral natural law, decalogue reasoning from the commandments, including perfect and imperfect duties. The non-biblical discussion, how would we work to convince this young expectant mother if she were not a Christian and accepting these moral principles from Scripture? And then if we were to look at this from a utilitarian perspective, how might she uh, think about this? 900 to 1,200 words. Uh, be sure to keep all of that in mind. Um, all of this is what I've continued to uh, uh, talk with you about through, through this description. Uh, I will emphasize again the importance of including scripture. Be sure to use the proper translations, no paraphrases like the New Living Translation or the Living Bible. Use the King James, the New King James, the American Standard, the New American Standard, the New International Version. Make references from our course readings from week chapter eight or earlier parts of the course. Um, be sure to give a strong defense of biblical morality. Also working to do so with the non-Christian reader from a moral natural law perspective. And then make sure you address utilitarianism. And format, format, format. Uh, use the proper uh, formatting style that you've chosen. Be consistent with it and uh, make sure it's got a polished writing style, free from all spelling, grammar, and punctuation errors, which means it needs to be proofed and proofed again before it is submitted. Well, 
There we go. That's what we're doing in week eight. Uh, a lot to do, not only in this course, but I know you're wrapping up some other work as well. So I'm praying for you and I'm nearby if needed. Let's finish strong and finish well. God bless you here in week eight.